Well, let's talk about this solar flare. The latest one. I've seen some arms on it. I looked at the film. This is dated pretty recent. It's off of space.com. Tariq Malik. So it's telling you we got a double whammy on the 6th. They're both X class. The first was the biggest one, the 5.4. And the second, the 1.3. You got a little video there, you can play that if you want. And they watched it, of course. Solar Dynamics Observatory. And they claim that the first look data from B, Stereo B, didn't really tell them for sure if it's heading toward the planet. The best guess is probably yes, but not directly at it. Glancing below to the magnetosphere is possible on March the 8th or the 9th. And according to Phillips, this is from AR 1429, we knew that. And when it's directly at the Earth, we knew most of this, probably. Can endanger the astronauts' satellites, interfere with communication, damage power grid. And then you get the northern and southern lights. We knew all that. And then it talks about the five categories. Ranking system. And it's talking about the prior other flares. And it talks about prior to this one, the only huge flare of 2012 was January 27 and X 1.7. And you can read right here. You know, about the categories being broken down into subsets. And the X's are the only ones that have subcategories that go higher than a nine. And the most powerful on their record occurred in 2003. Estimated to be an X28. So that would be a humongo. But they claim they're not really sure it's going to be right on us, spot on, or we're glancing blue. Well, I found a different one. You've probably seen them, maybe. This is the updated part. And they project them to impact Earth and Mars, as well as interplanetary spacecraft, including NASA's. Spitzer Space Telescope, Messenger Probe with Mercury, and Stereo B. They also tell you the this was the biggest one since this one, I remember this one. X6.9 on August 9, 2011. And then that one we didn't feel any anything really from it. And we go for the other update. They're talking uh, a lot of commentators. Carrington event of 1859. A solar storm that was so strong it frazzled the telegraph wires. And that was associated with what was a surely off the scale flare. Bigger, bigger than the X-28. So this person has rephrased this reference accordingly. Thing if you want to look at that. And that suggested the article it could have an earthly impact.
Let's see. Talking about the aura, aurora, the most northern of the lower 48. Should have a chance to see that. Could something more serious happen? Hmm, well, it's predicted to reach a G3, and that could alarm some power systems, interfere with GPS, airplanes probably going to be rerouted. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is NASA and the NOAA have lots of resources in space to monitor this activity. And hopefully give a little quick heads up to the network operators to assess and prepare. Well, well we got a heads up on that. We just can't do anything about it. It's already on the way. We're already undergoing the beginnings, probably. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of power go down. But I can be wrong. They said they weren't sure if it was going to glance, but it probably would. And this is about Israel. Netanyahu gave a good interview, I thought. He answered some correct questions straight and direct. And I think there's a couple of points I'd like to point out here. So let's listen and see what you think if you haven't heard and thought about what's being said. Talk about the Jewish future, but you also touched on last night that if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, obviously you're in the direct line of fire, and Ahmadinejad has made very derogatory remarks of, or stated his very ugly intentions towards Israel. But it's, it's now, a world now, problem. Now you're being a diplomat. They mm -hmm. said that Israel should be wiped off the face of the earth. Indeed. And they're developing nuclear weapons to do for that purpose. Not only for that, they could also shut down the Straits of uh, uh, Hormuz. You know, now they're threatening them. You're worried about the price of oil today? You think about what it would mean if Iran, this, this regime, radical regime that chants death to America, death to Israel, they'd get their hands on nuclear bombs, atomic bombs. A, they could use it against any one of us. B, they can give it to their terrorist proxies to use against any one of us. Three, they could um, threaten credibly to block the Straits of Hormuz, which would send the, sky, the, the price of oil skyrocketing, not anything that even remotely resembles what we have now. And they'll pocket the dough because they're oil producers. So, you know, these are things that could change the world. It could be like a hinge of history. We could live in another time. We've never had, uh, since the advent of nuclear weapons, uh, a regime that could act with, with such irresponsibility, having those weapons of mass death. So I, I think this is something that we should, uh, we should talk about. Everybody talks about the, uh, you know, the cost of taking action to stop Iran. I think it's important to start talking about the cost of not acting to stop Iran, of, of a world in which the Ayatollahs would have atomic bombs. I think that that could be catastrophic. Do you have the sense that... Uh I think he's got it right. That could be catastrophic. Ayatollahs with bombs. Let's see if I can find this other part. I think it's right about 11.14. She's asking him something else pretty good. So we had that once in 2003, but we haven't had it since. Could your country do this military action alone? I, I suppose you see the, saw the articles the last couple of weeks, and it sort of looked... Uh, there's sort of leaks to the American press that uh, it would be an extraordinary military challenge to go in and take these out. Um, can you do it? You know, I, I never talk about that. You know, everybody else talks about it. I, every day. Every day. How about every hour? I, uh, <laughs> I open a paper and there's a, a new assessment of what Israel can do and what it can do with these operational timelines and uh, all of that in great detail. Uh, well, you know, not for me. I don't talk about it. I will say that Israel has great concerns. Uh, we don't have the capabilities of the United States, but we're a capable country. 
I spent a long time with President Obama in the Oval Office. Um, yep. They're a capable country. I think they're going to do something like I said. They're trying everything they can, it looks like, not to have to. But this is all foretold. Neither side is going to stop. I don't see it. They want what they want. And they can't let them have what they want. So there's going to be a clash. Just how big a one we're going to have to see. I, I would think it, they would not want it to be long and drawn out. And they would be more concerned with not that they couldn't make a good attempt. But the fallout from the aftermath of how do the other people react all over the place around them, you know, that, that would probably be more of their concern. So it's going to be a go at some point. And Assad and Syria. I believe they were talking about U.S. action or something on him. They were discussing Obama wanting them to assess a possible situation that they might have to go over there and see what the options would be. And this is the front page article that was on there. This is the old Robert Mueller. Pretty little writing. When Mr. Mueller was pressed at a budget hearing, he'd have to check with Eric Holder. Holder's criteria for targeted killing of Americans to see whether it can be justified within the U.S. Can you believe this? He couldn't answer the question. He has to check whether Holder's criteria can be justified. What does that say? Polenti. Well, I also have some bad news. Um, my brother, older brother, <clears throat> had already underwent cancer treatment for a tumor that he had behind his eye socket. And he went through some major surgeries and chemo and radiation. And they had told him that they had got it. Even from that point, he had always been in continual pain. The same pain that he had never went away. He had looked and sought some type of help for that. And they wanted to perform a new PET scan. So they performed a new PET scan, and a PET scan revealed that he has cancer in the lungs at this point, which he didn't know. Being as that he took the chemo and radiation, within X amount of years from this point, which it hasn't been that long, it's been within the last two years, they said he could not take any for the lung cancer. So he is going to attempt to speak to another surgeon, doctor in a different town and see if they can perform operation to cut as much of it out as they can. So we could use some more of those prayers that you all have been kind enough to send my way no matter how it turns out. I hope that he can be comfortable in his pain somehow. So I'll speak to you all real soon. Uh, keep looking up at Venus and Jupiter because it's, I think we got a week. And during that week it's going to start looking real cool towards the 12th and the 13th right in there. So God bless. I keep you all in my prayers.